Good morning, everybody. Matt Modai here with the Splash Zone, back in your life, giving you my favorite NBA player prop picks for today. So we're talking Wednesday, October 24th. I think we got four games on tap for tonight. I have three NBA player prop bangers for you guys to lock in for tonight. Of course, before we can get into tonight's, tonight's picks, we got to do a recap from yesterday, which ended up being a decent day overall. We only got, we went, we won two of our four bets. We won half of our bets, but the juicy plus money bangers came to cash, which is what gave us a profitable day. So two and two yesterday up 1.1 units. Now that was on the back of taking John Morant in his assist prop and laddering it all the way up to 10 plus assists for juicy odds. That's what cashed John Morant, a plus and 10 plus assists. And then we lost our two three-point props on Maxi and KCP. They both just shot horribly. That was dead basically after the first half because they were combined like one of 10 from deep in the first half. So really had no luck there. But that's why we take Juicy plus Money Bangers. That's why we play these ladder plays because we ended up having a profitable day overall. On the entire season, we are still slightly in the red after a rough, rough opening night on Tuesday. But obviously only two nights into the NBA season, not scared off at all. Last year, I'm going to continue to give out last year's data probably for the first week or so of the season just to let people know a wider sample size of how we did. Last year was amazing. Over 118 units of profit over, I mean, just under 16% ROI last year. Incredible. Hopefully we can, uh, we can have that uh, same type of success this year. But enough of that. You're only as good as your most recent bangers. So as for today's picks, again, I'm going to have three for you guys to lock in. Not climbing any ladders tonight. Did not quite see the ceiling potential on these. So just three straight up picks. Number one, we're going with Luka Doncic, 10 plus assists, minus 105 odds at ESPN bet. Now, if you're like me and ESPN bet limited me to $10 on this play, I got it at, you can get it at minus 110 at bet 365 is how I played it. So anyways, Looking at the play itself, I understand that looking at last season's data is not always perfect, but that's really all we have to go off of. And if last year's last year is any indication, Luka, John, Luka Doncic assists should be an absolute smash play against this Spurs team. Last year, the Spurs, they really, really struggled guarding the perimeter. They gave up a ton of interior penetration. And, you know, they added Chris Paul, but they don't really have a ton of plus defenders yet on the perimeter. So I'm not really seeing... A different situation with the Spurs defense. Obviously, they have Wemby cleaning stuff up in the paint, but that doesn't help if teams are just waltzing to the rim at will. So that led to the Spurs giving up a ton of points when teams ran the pick and roll. They gave up a lot of points specifically to the pick and roll roll man. Last year, the Spurs tied with the Pistons, allowing literally the most points per game to pick and roll men in the entire NBA. Yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive when you think of Victor Wembanyama patrolling the paint, but because players were just walking walking to the rim with ease with no perimeter, um, no perimeter uh, without anybody stopping them on the perimeter is what I'm looking for. He would have to sell out to block shots instead of sticking with the big man who was rolling. And that led just to a ton of lobs, a ton of dump offs to that roll man. So that's something that I kind of foresee happening again this year. And it's a brilliant matchup for Luka Doncic, who ran the fourth most pick and rolls in the NBA last year, also averaged the, the fourth most drives in the NBA last year, but he led the NBA in assists specifically out of drives. I mean, we all know Luka, he's phenomenal at uh, bending to the will of the defense and or making the defense bend to his will, excuse me, and scoring if that's not an option and assisting if that's the option. And given how much points the Spurs allowed to roll men, I think it's another great assist night for Luka Doncic. And you know, this could be, if you wanted to take Derek Lively points, I think that's a really good play as well. That would be a lean. I'm definitely not betting it. I'm just going to take the Luka assist. But if the roll man gets a bunch of points, my guess is that's probably going to be Derek Lively. I just, I thought it was safer to go with Doncic assist because I don't want to have to worry about a time split between Lively and Daniel Gafford. And obviously we get the benefit of Luka kicking, kicking it out to shooters as well. That's another reason why. I wanted to get on the Luka assist because the, the Mavericks revamped their shooting around Luka Doncic. Now their defense is going to take a hit, but around Luka, they added Klay Thompson. They added Quentin Grimes, two excellent catch and shoot three point specialists. And PJ Washington did a really good job in that role with the Mavericks, mostly in the playoffs, really when he really came alive from a shooter, but someone that can also shoot. Now I will admit the Spurs did not give up a ton of catch and shoot three point attempts last year. 
But when you're looking at the lobs that they allowed, or that uh, looking at the lob potential from pick and rolls, you look at maybe not a ton of catch and shoot, but enough to get the assist number up for Luka Doncic. I have a really good feeling about Luka assist tonight. You know, you look at last year's data in four games against the Spurs, Luka went over. Uh, he got, he got the ten and he got the ten assist number in three of four games. One game he had an absurd sixteen assists against the Spurs and. The more important number here is he averaged 18.75 potential assists in those four games. That's, I mean, 18.75 uh, potential assists is an awesome number when we just need him to get to 10, especially because, I, I mean, hopefully a lot of those potential assists are from lobs, which is obviously a very high value, high percentage shot. And I like the fact that he only played the Spurs once after the All-Star break, which is when the Mavericks revamped their roster. And that was the game where Luka Doncic had, he had 16 assists, on 20 potential assists. Now I'm only taking him to get to 10. It would not be a total shock to see him have a similar, just obscene assist night to night. Let's hope that happens, cashes out this bad boy. That's play number one. Uh, before we get into play number two, I would appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. You know, we had a great night last night after a rough game one. I'm expecting great things for this NBA season. So hopefully you uh, would appreciate it. And hopefully you do subscribe and you enjoy all this stuff that I'm giving out. Also, obviously for NFL, all that stuff as well. And then for this specific video, like and comment. I love reading through all the comments. Now for play number two, I'm going right back to Dante DiVincenzo. Four plus assists. Another half unit play. Plus 195 odds at Fandle. You know, we got burned horribly on Dante DiVincenzo assists when I took him on opening night. I took him four plus and I laddered him to five plus. Nothing about, even though that play lost, nothing about what happened in that game scared me off of taking his assist prop again. And, you know, we're getting an even better price than we got on opening night. And I, you know, everything that we saw actually makes me like this play even more. So I'm going right back to it. I'm not going to get scared off. The logic is pretty much the same. And again, he had the role that we wanted him to have in that game. It was just horrible, horrible luck with him not getting that fourth assist. You know, he had three assists like halfway through the first quarter. I mean, everybody thought that play was a lock. I was admittedly asleep, but we all thought that play was going to cash. Next thing you know, he did not get a single assist the rest of the game. Just absolutely brutal, but right process, right logic. I'm going right back to it. Now, unfortunately, the NBA has not yet released tracking data, so I cannot tell you how many potential assists that he had, but almost everything went the way that we wanted it to. You know, it was the perfect continuation of his role from the preseason. Again, he only added, he only ended with three assists, but if you look at the Timberwolves guards, he was third on the Timberwolves in total passes. He was only behind Anthony Edwards and Mike Conley, who we never thought he was gonna have more passes than them anyways. Gobert had more passes than him, but his don't really count because they're just really out of the post. It's not like playmaking passes, which is sometimes the case with Edwards and Conley. And then again, DiVincenzo was only right below him. And for those of you that did not watch Tuesday's video that you have no idea what I'm talking about, I took Doncic for, or excuse me, I took DiVincenzo four plus assists on the logic that his role in the preseason was as the uh, backup point guard. And that was the role that was going to continue in the regular season. If we look at the preseason, he played three games where he played meaningful minutes. Like basically any, he played three games above nine minutes, played 20 in all three of those games, had four assists in all three of those games. He had four once, he had five once, and he had seven once. And after one of the games, the Timberwolves head coach was asked about it. And he basically said verbatim, DiVincenzo is going to start the season as our backup point guard, backing up Mike Conley. He said that DiVincenzo had done a really good job in the preseason and in training camp running the offense and distributing. So they're going to give him that opportunity. Week, or excuse me, game one, he played 31 minutes. He had a 27% assist rate. There's no reason to be scared off of DiVincenzo assists, even though it was just a brutal beat the first time we played it. You have to have thick skin and a, and a short memory because that's unfortunately just what happens in the NBA. You can have a right play, doesn't always go your way, but all we can do is have the right process, which I thought was good in the first game. I'm going right back to it tonight. I'm not getting double screwed if DiVincenzo goes off from uh, goes off with his assist tonight. So that's play number two. Play number three in our third and final pick of the video, Christian Brown, two plus made three pointers, plus 220 odds at FanDuel. I'm only putting 0.35 units on this one i'm lowering the unit size a little bit you know we've been getting smoked admittedly on these three-point props to start the year have not won a single three-point prop granted i've only played three so i'm 0 for three but we haven't hit one i really really do like the angle for christian brown so i don't want to just completely be scared off because we haven't had success yet with these three-point props now i am playing it lighter 
because I mean, it's plus 220 odds for a reason. And I will admit, I'm probably not going to play three pointers as heavily moving forward as I did the first two days of the year, but I'm not just, just going to completely give up on the market. So I just kind of wanted to get that out there at the beginning. With all that being said, I think that this is an absurd price on Christian Brown to make two three pointers. And it's, it's going off of last year's data. He only played 20 minutes per game last year, and he only attempted on average three, or excuse me, two three pointers per game. Totally different role for Christian Brown. He's the starter now. He's taking over KCP in that starting role as KCP moved up. KCP moved on, signed with the Magic. Christian Brown has, at least to begin the year, is going to get that starting spot. So we can't go off of last year's data because he's going to have a completely different role. Now, he did not shoot at a high percentage, admittedly, in the preseason, but he was attempting the shots. And the most important number here is that he took the most corner three-point attempts on the Nuggets in the preseason. That's why we are on this play tonight. It's the corner three-point matchup against the Thunder. Last year, no team in the NBA allowed more corner three-point attempts per game than the Oklahoma City Thunder. And this is not just a one-year blip either. It's a running theme with this Thunder coaching staff. Two years ago, they gave up the second most corner three-point attempts in the NBA, followed that up allowing the most. It's a defensive philosophy for the Thunder. But you have to keep in mind, it's the players that they choose to leave open. They're not leaving the best shooters open on the corner. They're leaving guys that they don't respect their jump shot, so they're cool with them taking corner threes. Last year, the uh, Thunder gave up the fourth most open three-point attempts in the NBA. Open, defined by the NBA.com as between four and six feet of space. That's why the Thunder were so good last year, because they're like, hey, we don't trust your shot. We're going to leave you open. And if you're going to make two, that's fine, because it means that Christian Brown is taking a shot when it's not Jokic, when it's not Jamal Murray, something like that. Now, that did kind of screw them in the playoffs last year. They got burned by P.J. Washington and Derek Jones Jr. from the Mavericks. So maybe they changed that defensive philosophy, but probably not in the first game of the year. They're probably not going to respect Kristen Brown as a shooter. They're probably going to leave him open on the corner. And he showed the willingness to take these shots in the preseason. You know, yesterday we got burned, the guys we took to make three-pointers. They took them, just shot horribly. Hopefully that doesn't happen again tonight. But because we're getting plus 220 odds, absolutely this is worth a sprinkle. Just lower the unit size a little bit, unit size responsibly. But I think this is a phenomenal play. I think all three of these are phenomenal play plays. Feels like we're going to sweep the board. Let's hope that happens. But that's all the bangers that we have for tonight. So three plays for you guys to lock in. The last thing that I will mention before we get out of here is that I do have a dub club where I send all my plays out for five bucks a month. I send it out, gets sent directly to your phone via text, email, or telegram. The way it works is as soon as I decide what a play is, the first thing I do is send it out to my dub club. So if you don't always have time to watch the YouTube videos or you just don't care about the YouTube videos or by the time you watch them, the odds change, that's why I have the dub club. It, you don't get any different plays. You just get them sent to you early and sent directly to your phone. So if you're interested, check that out. Link is in the description as well as the pinned comment. If you're not interested, no problem. You can still get everything for free on YouTube and on Twitter, but that is all we got. So I appreciate everybody for watching and have a good one.